Hello, Nick and Helen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Carmen with Horse Sense North. And do you want to do your own introductions? I would love for you to be able to share a little bit with those who are watching who you are, because I think you're amazing, but maybe they don't know you. Uh, Nick? I'll, I'll let you go first. Ladies first, Helen. Ladies first. Okay. Well, I've taught self-defense for well over 20 years, um, was a stunt woman for 27, 28 years. Um, I used to be a contributing writer for UK's Combat Magazine. Uh, I taught seminars uh, worldwide, uh, privates. Um, Nick? Yeah. Well, was same story because our journey started together. Like yeah. hers a little bit earlier than mine. So it's I'm in the self-defense um, in, in the industry for about 20 years. And, you know, I started, you know, as a student, became a teacher and um, it was my passion. I uh, did security for uh, 10 years in clubs, nightclubs, bars, events. He and I worked together as, as yeah. bouncers. Uh, yeah. yeah. We worked great partner. Great side by sides. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, later on, I, I got into, you know, I, I, I turned it into a full time career, opened my YouTube channels, my social media, online courses. I created a whole brand and structure course. And now uh, just, you know, next month I'm going to LA for a week to teach a seminar. I got like two seminars a day, a day that I'm going to be doing over the next five days, plus then Athens, Greece. So um, it's good. It's, it's um, I'm still pursuing and still learning and growing and, you know, following this journey. That's fantastic. I couldn't be more thrilled to be connected to both of you. I'm going to share a little bit of my backstory of how I got to know Helen um, in this moment, if that's okay with you. Uh, so great. So when I was, uh, I think it was about 12, 13 at the most, um, I ended up taking some private classes with you and carried that on until I was about 16 and trained with you for where I was at in my life at the time, fairly intensively. I wouldn't say that's the same now, um, but it sure made a huge impact in every area of my life. There was a lot of stuff going on at that time that was really hard. I think teenage years are hard for most people. Um, and it was just the most fantastic outlet as well as kind of life preparation. Um, I lost touch with Helen. I didn't see Helen for 17 years, but I always had Helen's voice in my head. I, there was day, I don't think there was a day that went by that I didn't have some kind of memory or some kind of awareness, whether it was situational awareness for my own physical safety or just some moment of like kind of inspiration or empowerment um, that really helped guide me in so many ways. So now that we have Horse Sense North in this beautiful farm where we do horse, you know workshops and programs and all kinds of stuff, mostly with horses, but a lot of it's centered around this theme of empowerment and when we put up our facility here I was like okay wouldn't it be amazing if I could find Helen and invite her to come and do a workshop and I found after Helen all online years, after all those after years all those like... years I found wow. Helen because of your videos Nick oh because okay. of the videos you did together like no <laughs> yeah and then I was like binge watching the videos with the two of you on YouTube I'm going oh this is such a blast from the past and so fantastic and I reached out to Helen. I couldn't believe when Helen actually answered the phone. <laughs> and it just felt like such a meant to be moment. So lots has unfolded since then. Um, and that kind of led to us doing a workshop together at our farm here in, in North Muskoka, Ontario. Um, but also just, you know, considering even this pathway of becoming an instructor myself was not anything I had planned, but I'm so grateful that Helen suggested that when you were here last year. So um, that's how I learned more about your work as well, of course, through those videos. And then I've done a much deeper dive with your fantastic courses and everything that you put out into the world. So it just gives me so much joy to be connected to both of you again for Helen and Nick for, for the first time. And um, yeah, it's, it's just a pleasure to be able to, to be chatting with you today. Yeah, I, I knew when I, when I got the call from you, Carmen, and we've spoken about this before, um, I stopped doing seminars and I stopped teaching. And, you know, Nick Nick can attest to that. Like, he's always wanted me to partner up and do yeah. something with him. And I'm like, no, no, no. But then I got the call from you and something said, say yes. Mm -hmm. And so I always listen to my tuition. It's, it's what we teach, right? Listen to your intuition. 
And of course, when I saw you spoke with you and you helped me, you worked with me amazingly well throughout the seminar that, that I gave in Ontario with you. And it just seemed like a perfect fit. You're a perfect fit of an instructor that everyone needs in order to help, whether it's children, young children, young teen, uh, teens, uh, young adults, women, men. And, all... and Helen spoke very highly about you and said she has so much potential in all the qualities and then, I mean, I met you that one time, but I never saw your work. And after I started seeing your work, there's a reason why I started sharing it because I'm like, wow, her values and what she stands for is very much of the type of instructors and brand that, you know, I'm trying and we're trying to grow. We want a good team. We just, people approach me for instructors all the time. It's not, I don't just take anybody. I have to meet them. I have to talk to them because it's like, you know, we try to create a community because, you know, we don't just want anybody going around teaching just anything. And there's a certain amount of, of of values that that an instructor has to share together as a team. And it has to be somebody that I need to know I could trust my own family with them. So I know once I can do that, yeah, this this person is meant to do this and, and would be an asset to everyone. Oh, that's really kind. And I'm so honored to be part of the team for so long so many reasons talking about intuition you know that's I've made lots of choices in my life that were kind of off the beaten track and I think that connection to intuition that was so literally worked into my body in our time together um, and also that sense of courage and empowerment to be able to walk down those less you know trodden trails so to speak that really came a lot from our time together so to be able to have that opportunity to share that with others for lots of reasons why ever, whatever reason they might have to come and do work with us it just makes me really happy but that also leads me into wanting to ask you some questions and kind of share some more about your wise and your reasons as to why you do this work so when you think about all the amazing work that you've done both together and individually what would you want to say about your why that you do this kind of work in the world why you know when you see when you meet someone or a group of people and you could see that there's something that holds them back their head is down or they're just not confident. They're, there's a sadness that, that comes with who they are. Mm -hmm. And you just slowly start to tear down that wall a little bit and you make the connection with them and you somehow you're able to give them that confidence that they always, that, that, that knowledge and ability that they always had in order to get safely home, in order to have the confidence to do whatever it is that they need to do. It's that in itself, it's it's theirs and it's 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 a gift for them by them because they realize it themselves. But I have to say, to watch it unfold mm -hmm. is just rewarding. I I I I I don't know how to put it into words, just how rewarding it is to know that you had some small percent, you know, in, in helping this person just expand their life and, and grow and, and just become a happier person and safer. Yeah, I, I, I mean, she couldn't have put it better. And I totally agree. And that's, that's my why and my passion as well. It's like taking, you know, you know, as a kid, I got bullied and I got picked on and I you know got a few beatings and stuff like that so I started this journey when I was young like martial arts and I I followed it throughout my life um, as well as with so many challenges I had uh, you know from learning disabilities and to growing up you know the way I grew up so it, like all that followed into a way and I was able to use martial arts and self-defense to grow personally and I feel if it worked for me I see how it works for other people. And it's not only about teaching them how to throw a strong strike and how to like, you know, it's not about the big guy with the tattoos and screaming. Ugh. Like I actually, to me, that's, that's not self-defense anymore. It's just, you know, one person who can't control his emotion, but I, I work with clients and I've seen people from all ages 
when you teach them self-defense, it's not only about learning, again, how to defend yourself, but how they carry themselves through their everyday life at work, how they communicate with their friends when they walk down the street. Even if nothing ever happens, and we hope nothing ever happens, but we train them at least if something does, you have the gift and the power to be able to protect what's more precious than anything else, and that's your life. That's that's the way I see it. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And I also want to focus in on something you said there, Nick, because I hear you have a lot of study in the martial arts as well as street fighting and self-defense. So what was it that made you choose to really hone in on the self-defense side of things as your main mode of teaching? And I think this is might be this might be a good um, kind of concept for people who are wondering, what is the difference? Why would I want to learn self-defense and not just rely on my skills with judo or karate or whatever their preferred martial art might be? Well, I think I got into the self-defense. It's interesting because when I started getting into the self-defense, there was no like there was no money in it, let's say, quote unquote, the industry wasn't busy, but that was my passion. So that's why I became a strength training coach. I was training people physical, like strength training, which I still do, but I was teaching self-defense. I was making videos, but nobody cared to take privates back then. It wasn't as busy because it wasn't a big thing about, okay, let me learn how to defend myself. People were more concerned. Let me get in shape. But it was always, my, and later on, as I got older, I don't know what shifted and sometimes what shifted in today's society where I'm getting calls weekly of parents saying, I want my, I train my kids. I got a, you know, he's almost 50 years old. A, a gentleman who just called me, he's like, I want to take self-defense classes. I want to be able to protect my family. This stuff I never saw before. Mm. And um, I got it. Like I, I kind of, it was always there. That was my real thing because Again, and to answer your second questions, working in security and training with you know people who had a base of self-defense and and ideas and concepts versus people who had traditional martial arts, I I could see the proof right there what actually worked. And just one fight, one guy's going for a takedown while I'm trying to you know pick up an improvised weapon. Just to give you any random example, but right there you, you we we would see it together where one person was a great grappling jujitsu guy but had no 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 idea what to do well what if a person attacks me with a knife well i'm going to go for an arm bar you know what i mean so when you work in this environment long enough you'll figure out yourself the hard way what works and what doesn't work you can't you, you there's no other way around it and chances are if you're going to be um attacked uh let's say if you're a woman you're going to be attacked in some way most of the times it's by someone you know um, you're not just going to go into uh, grapple your uncle. You know, it's very, it's very off-putting when you have this trust with this other human being and suddenly they're saying things to you that just don't feel right. Uh, they might be slowly touching you in places that just don't feel right. It's not, it's not like that usual hug in front of other people. It's not that usual kiss. It could be anything. And like, how do you deal with that? If you're only dealing with a sport, where's the psychology of what do I do if he says this or he does that? Um, and I know him and my family knows him and they love him. And, the, you know, where, you know, how would they trust me over him if he's such a good friend or, or if he's, you know, the brother of my father's, you, you know? So that stuff is not taught in sports. Sports and, and, and you know, mixed mar martial arts are great, but there's a big gap there that's missing. And that gap is the psychology and what to do if, and what to say and how to prepare yourself for the possibilities in order to best avoid them in the future. Yeah. And that's where I think some people who are starting to learn that this is something I offer as well, um, in addition to my facilitation and coaching for horse related things, but of course, in our human lives, um, they're wondering a little bit about that gap. But I think that that's exactly how it leads to it, right? Because although I'm working with people, maybe in a leadership context, or, you know, empowering in our personal lives, or con conflict resolution or de-escalation tactics, this is just the next level of it. The stuff that I that I, I love to teach um, in other ways, it's only going to a certain point. And unfortunately, we do live in a world where it could go into a very scary place 
in a setting that we're really not expecting it to be. So I'm so grateful to have these skills for both the psychology, the physical, the internal intuition, all of the, those pieces to be able to kind of learn, keep learning myself, keep going. I think it's a lifelong learning journey. And that's another reason I'm so grateful for the content that you keep putting out there um, because it just helps keep me sharp and, and think about things again and again. Um, so yeah, it's just great. I've been in this game for like 20 years and I'm, you know, I still just signed up with a private boxing coach. So it's a never ending. I'm always reworking, refining, and I'm always trying to add new, like not, not so much changing everything, but I'm constantly working on my skills. Cause I, I believe like you can't stay stagnant. You got to keep growing and you're always learning and adding new things. So it's, it, I think it's part of, it's part of the journey as well when when you decide to to do this for a living like for me it's it's, it's a never ending it's what i do for a living so i'm always like trying to like learn and and, and grow in this in this uh, industry in this field for sure to wrap things up with lots of experience under both your belts if there was one thing in this moment that you really wanted to communicate to people whether they've had an experience with self defense before or not but I'm thinking especially of the people who are maybe a little hesitant about it. What would you say is the most important thing to communicate? I'm sure you'll think of lots of things later, <laughs> but in this moment, what's the one thing that comes to you that says, you know, with all my experience, this is what I really want to say to that person. Okay. Now I'll be biased <laughs> in my response. Okay. If you're going, if you want to learn, there's no two people I know better than to train with either Nick or with Carmen. Mm -hmm. It is such a safe atmosphere. If you make a mistake, if you're shy, if you, you know, quote unquote, you know, screw up and you have to do a drill over again, or you need to practice more and more and more, there's no two people I know better than to work with either of you. And to do that in such a comfortable setting, such a safe setting, um, you really have nothing to lose and you have everything to gain, mm -hmm. everything to gain. Even if you want to just start off with a sport, like if you just want to come in, I want to hit a bag. I'm not ready to do a, a psychology. I don't feel the need to open up yet and, and tell you about my experiences and whatnot. You just want to hit a bag. You just want to hit something. No two people better than Nick Drosos and Carmen Theobald. So what I would say to that, um, and, and this is the way I look at it. Like, I mean, my son's 14 years old now. And I'm already preparing him for the world. And I, I say, there's nothing more precious than this, our life. There's nothing. That's, you know, if we're not here, nothing else actually matters. And I always say, it's your responsibility and nobody will fight more and harder for your life than anybody else. So you can't expect that from anybody. So the first thing, it's your responsibility to protect yourself. Learn that more than anything. The second, what I would say too, is that when you train with a good instructor, um, a good instructor is going to listen to you. He's going to respect your limits, your time. You know, any instructor who just takes you and throws you in there and pushes you, I, I we don't have that approach. I could take somebody who's, who's terrified, who's been in a situation or been attacked. And, you know, I've worked with women who've been raped and abused. And it's like, we're going to go at your own pace. It's just me and you, you're in a safe space. So anybody who wants to learn self-defense, if, if you're training, and, and I know we say, have the same philosophy, if you're training in, in this type of mindset, well, you, you know, you could, you could learn self-defense in a way that is going to, you know, is going to help you like, again, learn self-defense going to help you grow, go at your own rhythm, uh, you know, slowly build confidence and get you to where you want to get and make the journey as well, a peaceful journey. And what I mean by that, you also don't want to teach self-defense and create like a monster. And like, you know what I mean? Where it's like, right, well, you, you know, like we've been there, you know, where it was like, rah, 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 you know, we thought, no, like, I mean, that's not my approach. That's not the trainers I want. 
trainers I want are people who have a good philosophy where we're learning self-defense and we're, you know, we're going to use it with, with our morals and, and, and ethics and, you know, and, and all of that together. So everybody has that, you know, that, that power in them to, and, and that opportunity to take that step and learn self-defense without making it into a scary, negative, or bad experience. To me, that is the fundamental, most important when people come to train with me or any of us. And it doesn't matter who you are, your age, uh, physical capabilities, um, you know, your your average housewife, someone who's maybe never done a sport before in their life, uh, you know, that kid who never went outside to play. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody is able to do it. Everyone is able to survive potential life-threatening situations and it just anyone that we work with they all say the same thing I didn't realize it was just that easy point, like it was just point. such a simple response to a really bad situation yeah. they just didn't realize it we we get thrown off by media yeah. movies and stuff like that. we think that we have to be a certain type of person in order to achieve a certain kind of success and that's just not the case yeah, I agree yeah no Oh, I love that so much. And I'm just beyond grateful to be connected with you again, Helen, and to be connected with you, Nick, and to be representing the team. Um, and I really believe making a change in the world. We are Carbon, so yeah. happy with you. We couldn't be happier. There's, a, re really there's a reason why I share your videos. I Because mm -hmm. what, what you're doing is, like again, it's very inspiring. I watch it. And um, like I could tell that th th you're changing people's lives. I, I like your approach too. Um, I also love the way you're you're putting everything together. You know, what I mean, uh, the mindset and 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 everything with the horse, just the whole experience. I think is really. You're so yeah. knowledgeable, yeah. and you're so good with people, yeah. and you're so patient and empathetic, and just so warming. It, it's just and, you're and, a perfect and, fit. And you can't teach that. You either have no, it, yeah. You have it, or you don't. And I think that's another thing that's important that you know you meet instructors who are authentic that they actually care right and to me that's the number one you have to really care and love and really care to make sure that what you're teaching and the safety of this person that the information i'm giving them they're taking my word for it so i i can't if i'm not sold and convinced on what i do if and this is my this is my new um metric barometer if i say if i'm teaching this to my son you better believe, like I'm teach like whatever I wouldn't teach my son, I, I wouldn't teach out there because I know that if I'm teaching my son to do this, it's because I believe at a hundred ninety nine percent that this is this is the best way to do and or to defend against a certain situation. Yeah. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Carmen. Oh, Carmen, and welcome. Hmm. Thank you.